The Texas State Fair goes gun-free. It's August 12th, 2024, and these are your headlines. The State Fair of Texas has announced that firearms, well, they're going to be prohibited at this year's event, a decision that's drawn criticism from gun rights advocates. Now, have you been to the State Fair? If you know, it's a huge event. It's in Dallas. It's been held annually since 1886. The fair attracts millions of visitors each year. Last week, however, organizers introduced a new set of safety regulations, which include a ban on all firearms, even for those with a license to carry. Previously, licensed individuals were permitted to carry firearms at the fair. However, last year, three people were injured in a shooting at the fair's food court. The shooter, Cameron Turner, didn't have a license, so he was carrying illegally. Chris McNutt, who's the president of Texas Gun Rights, criticized the new policy. He said that it endangers attendees and called it yet another feel-good measure that does nothing to enhance safety. He went on to say the data consistently shows that gun-free zones are dangerous, with 94% of mass shootings occurring in these areas. By enforcing this policy, they're essentially asking fairgoers to compromise their safety and become easy targets. Of course, the shooter last year was already breaking the law by carrying a firearm, so disarming law-abiding citizens to improve safety, he said, is absurd. And the fair will run from Friday, September 27th through Sunday, October 20th. Houston Independent School District's appointed board of managers voted unanimously to place the largest school bond in Texas history on the November ballot. We've talked about a lot of these local bonds, a lot of school bonds. Have you ever heard of this? A $4.4 billion bond, $4.4 billion with a B. It'll be the district's first in over a decade. Roughly $2 billion of the bond would go to school upgrades, while $1.35 billion would be allocated to making campuses safe and healthy, which includes HVAC upgrades, campus security, and making sure environmental standards are met. And the last $1 billion would go towards advancing career and technical education. But at the same time that Houston ISD is considering this bond, the district will begin the school year with 748 fewer teachers, according to the state-appointed superintendent Mike Miles in his weekly newsletter to parents and teachers. The largest school district in Texas will begin with 10,640 teachers compared to 11,388 teachers last year. Specifically, he stated that HEISD seeks to staff schools with effective teachers who want to make a difference for students. As a result, some educators were removed due to performance. He also explained that to maximize resources, staffing levels needed to match the enrollment on campuses. Hey folks, Chris Salcedo here. I've got something special for you, the Salcedo Storm podcast. As your friendly, liberty-loving Latino, I bring you a mix of engaging discussions to help us fight for our state and our conservative values. It's the perfect way to stay informed and engaged in what's happening around you. So, what are you waiting for? Don't miss out on the storm of information and entertainment coming your way. The Salcedo Storm podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. A nonprofit in Texas that markets itself towards LGBT youth has promoted gender mutilation procedures to minors. The name of the nonprofit? Out Youth Austin. It's more than 30 years old and behind the push for gay straight alliance clubs in Texas schools. These are also called Genders and Sexualities Alliance Clubs. In November 2017, an Austin ISD report showed that the district decided to push the growth of these clubs district-wide, even into elementary schools. Texas Scorecard covered the report in May. Eileen Blakowski, a parent education advocate with Texas Education 911, warned about these clubs. After her firsthand experience helping parents deal with them in California, she said that these clubs expose minors to all kinds of apparent sexuality. These clubs are advertised as student-led. However, Blakowski said that because all student clubs need a faculty sponsor, the reality is, is that these are grooming grounds. And as it turns out, Out Youth Austin runs a project to put these clubs into schools statewide. It's called the Texas GSA Network. It provides, or in some cases points to, resources for starting and running these clubs, even for elementary level students. It also has a map of these clubs across the state. That's not all that Out Youth Austin has promoted to minors. The first part of this four-part investigative series is available right now. You can check out more from that investigative series or any of the news of the day at texasscorecard.com.